This show is proudly brought to you in partnership with Adreno. Shop with our sponsor Adreno at spearfishing.com.au and use the code NoobSpear at checkout and you will save yourself $20 on all purchases over $200. You'll be able to enjoy $15 flat rate shipping Australia-wide. Adreno is the biggest dive store in the world and they stock a massive range of gear for Spiros. They've got mega stores in Brisbane, Sydney and now Melbourne and they have over 60 underwater experts in store and it's a no-brainer. Get into Adreno and shop with our sponsors at spearfishing.com.au. I wanted to share awesome experiences that you can have when you are in the water. And that's why I started spearfishing. I just clamped down on the reel and got drugged down to about 50 feet. And I'd never had a battle like that before in my life. But when you're learning where to hunt and find fish, they're the hot spots. It's where fish want to be. Don't overcomplicate your gear. Don't go diving dressed up like a Christmas tree. <laughs> <laughs> I actually started off in stubbies with a bloody belt with a pig knife on it. And I've seen this big fin break the surface, roll into the water, look down. Here's this nice big great one. <laughs> Once your face hits the water and you feel relaxed and all the other stresses of life seem to disappear. It's a whole new world and it's mysterious, it's magical. Beats the shit out of knitting anyway. Oh yeah. G'day guys, thanks for uh, tuning into the new Spiro podcast today. It's awesome to have you with us in the studio. Turbo and Shrek bringing the spearfishing right to your ears wherever you are in the world. What are we doing today Turbo? Yeah, thanks for the intro Shrek. We are talking all about caring for your catch. So what you need to do from the time that you shoot that fish to the time that you eat it, we're going to cover everything in between to make sure that your catch is fresh and safe to eat. Awesome. So, but before we get started, we'll just cover off a few sort of administrative things. We uh, we oh, ran a... <laughs> you love your admin. Righto, come on. We ran a, uh, a Manny Sub roller powerhead conversion kit comp care of Emmanuel Bover over there at Manny Sub. He's over competing in Greece as we speak. Uh, with the Australian team, so hope he's going all good over there. But we had a winner for that comp, Turbo. Who who, who actually got it? Yeah, we did, mate. Uh, Kane Wiki is the winner of our Manny Sub Roller Powerhead Conversion Kit. So congratulations, Kane, and thank you to everybody else that shared the comp around and got involved. Um, sorry you didn't win it, but uh, we've got some new comps coming your way very shortly, don't we, Shrek? Yeah, yeah we've, got a, we've got an iTunes review comp. We've got... Sebastian Kramer, a freediving instructor in Wellington, New Zealand. You can find him at freedivetraining.co.nz. He sent us in eight copies of uh, Richard Leonard's One Fish Legends film, which is a great watch. It, it sort of features four uh, awesome Sparrows from different parts of the world, and sort of they, they go through their life story. It's a little bit like probably the new Sparrow podcast, but in a video format, and with a lot of spearfishing footage, sure, it's, it's pretty good. <laughs> It's a so, little bit better, but yeah, a lot of what you've done there. Uh, well, yeah, no, like, <clears throat> anyway, so, <laughs> so if you want to get in on that comp, you can uh, leave us a review on iTunes or Stitcher Radio and uh, send that, do take a screenshot of that review, send it in to me, uh, Shrek at Noob Spiro, and we would love to send you a copy. That'll be the first eight reviews, just as long as they're genuine, sincere, I don't even care if, they, <laughs> if you say we suck. But uh, as long as it, it's a good review. So, yeah, thanks for that, Sebastian. Excellent. <clears throat> All right, Shrek, any more administrative tasks? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, we, the latest subscriber to the uh, to the News Bureau floater email newsletter, Ben Mayer, he wrote in, he said, love the podcast, you guys are awesome, keep it up. So, Ben, you're, you're oh. a champion. Thanks for that, buddy. Also, the, uh, the podcast has just gone lo- live on a huge app called iHeartRadio which is like uh, millions of people can potentially now find our show over there. It's quite a handy app, I believe, if you guys want to switch over to that. Uh, Also, Mike Neeson and a couple of other blokes got on and just said some really awesome things about our new book that's available on Amazon uh, called 99 Tips to Get Better at Spearfishing. So he left us a good review and we've had a couple. So thanks for that, guys. Keep them coming. Let's help our book move up the uh, fishing charts. I believe we're still in the top 20 Fishing books, which is pretty cool. Oh, yeah, nice. Uh, also, Andrew up in Townsville bought a couple of shirts. He wrote in to say they are friggin' awesome. Thanks for your purchase, Andy, and I hope you're happy with your shirts, buddy. Uh, cool. Now, that's about it for me, Turbo. Oh, a couple more iTunes reviews. I wanted to read them out. Uh, Mike 
N. Goldstein over in the States. He says, after listening to every episode of Roman Castro's podcast twice, it was great to stumble upon your podcast. You can never get too much insight into the sport. I love the combination of funny stories and insightful tips. I am by no means a noob, but I'm certainly not an expert either, and I learn something new each episode. Keep it up, guys. I'm really enjoying it. Che- cheers from the long from a Long Island, New York spear fisherman. So. Yeah, go give us give us another give us another one, Trek. I'm pretty sure there's more than one good iTunes. Oh no, these are just the latest ones. So Smiley, all, oh, okay. Smiley, also over in the states. We're getting a lot from over there at the moment. He says, "Love the podcast. Shrek and Turbo are a blast to listen to with a lot of humour. I personally have learned a lot from this show. Keep up the good work, Robert. Cheers, buddy. And uh, we we hope to Shrek. We also finally uh, released our first ebook this week." Didn't we? Yeah, I mentioned that before with the guys' reviews, but you didn't listen, so... Ah, oh, did you? Yeah, save it. So, I was, <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was over here busy trying to buy it for Christmas gifts for my family. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, 99 tips to get better at spearfishing. It's up there on Amazon. It's going really well. We're, we're pretty happy with it, and we've, we've had some fantastic feedback, so get on and check that out. It's, it's kind of like the best information we've taken out of interviewing more than 40 Spearos, and we've just kind of condensed it down and... Try to make it really actionable so you can apply it in your next spearfishing trip. Yeah, awesome, mate. Can I just give you one more review? Of course you can. For, for 99 tips. Okay. I really enjoyed the concise format of this book, and I've taken away some great tips and tricks that I will be keen to use next time I go out spearfishing. I thoroughly recommend this book to any level of spearfisher. Since reading the book, I've started listening to the Authors Podcast, the Noob Spiro Podcast. It's full of great interviews with expert Spiros. That's awesome. <laughs> well thanks, uh Thanks, Mrs. Brown. Ah, uh, that was awesome. So, was that <laughs> was that the only review your parents left us? <laughs> They're still on dial up, oh, mate. <laughs> I love you, Mum. She's a good woman. Hope she's uh, tuning into the uh, podcast today. So, right, let's look. Oh, as much as I love yours, <laughs> let's look into one hundred and one caring for your catch. Where are we getting started, Turbo? Killing your killing the fish instantly. Where do you aim on a fish to kill it instantly? Absolutely. So, to kill your fish instantly. And the safest place to shoot that fish to make sure it doesn't tear off are headshots. So the head is obviously full of bones and a lot of um, tough structure in there. So you want to aim, as everybody knows, straight for the head. Now, the benefit of this too is that you may even stone that fish, which is really, really good. If you stone the fish, um, there's less uh, fight of the fish, less kicking and less buildup of lactic acid, which can sour the fish. So that's the first place you want to start. It's the most humane way to kill the fish. The lateral line as well, that line that runs along the side of the fish and that sort of denotes where the uh, spine of the fish is, if you can hit that area as well, sort of behind the uh, head, you'll also uh, be able to stone the fish. So another great place to shoot the fish. Cool. So any any other any other stone shot techniques? What do you do to personally get stone shots? Mate, if, if you're going to uh, – you can just point your gun at the fish, but if you – Take the time to actually think about your shot placement and aim at the head. That's the best way to do it. And if it's fast-moving pelagics, you might have to give them a little bit of lead. But uh, aim for that head, and in behind and slightly above the eyes, a great place to hit the fish. Um, you, you'll pretty much be able to stay in the fish if you hit it in that, that place. What do you do, Shrek? Mate, you know what I'm like with shooting. Um, no, no, I, I do the same. I, I aim behind the... Um the gill plates say normally, and try and hit right on the lateral line. If I'm slightly above the the fish as I'm sort of looking down, that that, that seems to help. But um, my stone shots are few and far between. I have better success just shooting them in the head, but even that's not a stone yep. shot necessarily. So, but yeah. So failing failing uh, the stone shot, uh, the second thing is second way to uh, best way to kill a fish uh, is with the Icky Jimmy method. You stumbled on that guy's website a while ago. Is that right? Yeah, exactly. So I've always known about the the method, but uh, or had a bit of a fair idea about it. But um, there's a website called ickyjimmy dot com. Now this is a great resource for Spiros because what it's actually got on this website is uh, side profile photos of a lot of the fish uh, that we shoot, like and the main groups. So like your snappers, your gropers, your pelag- a lot of the pelagic fish as well. And what this does, this website, is it's got a slider bar, and it actually shows you um, an X-ray vision of the fish. So it actually can show you and pinpoint the brain, and then as you make the fish less opaque and you bring it back to um, 
the outside shot of the fish, you can actually start to work out where the brain is on the fish so that when you do want to icky jimmy the fish, you'll know where to uh, to find the brain. I found this really, really helpful. I used to try and put the knife through the top of uh, like fish like cod. I used to try and put the knife through the top. Um, but since being on this sort of using this little app, um, I, I go in from the side now and I have great success just yeah, behind the eye there. Fish like yeah. That. yeah, exactly. Another common technique that a lot of guys use, if, if um, you know, like the ekijimmy.com website is phenomenal, no doubt about it. Another trick that I did when I started out, it's not so good on cod, but you, if you have a look at the line between the fish's eyes and then you make a triangle backwards, like an even you know, is it an isosceles triangle where they have even sides? And then you you imagine where a third eye would be at the top of the triangle, and that's where you want to get your knife through, and that's normally a pretty good kill stroke as well. So excellent. So basically, uh, yeah, and just insert the your dive knife into that that spot, and the fish should give a bit of a quiver, and that's when you know you've you've sort of hit the spot. Um, it it is a, the most humane way to kill a fish, you know, behind an actual outright stone shot. Um, it will improve the eating quality of the fish again because it's not thrashing around and you won't get a buildup of lactic acid. So if you want to learn more, head to ikijimmy.com. That's I-K-I-J-I-M-E.com. Um, great resource there, and uh, I think it'll it'll really help you out, help me out. We'll link that up in the show notes. So Absol- Absolutely. Just before we move on to another thing that it does, uh, according to that website, is the blood in... The blood in the flesh of the fish retracts back into the gut cavity, so that actually improves the eating quality there again, and the and the colour of the fish. So it's a it's a whiter flesh that you should get from it. Yeah, nice, righto. Okay, cool. So we've killed our fish; it's dead now. We either stoned it with a kill shot, or we we Vicky jimmied the fish. What's our next step? We bleed the fish. Yeah, that's right, mate. Um, so to bleed the fish, you're basically just going to cut the throat of the fish. So insert the knife in through the gills and and pull down. I often use a serrated edge for this. Um, and then that allows the, the blood in the fish to drain out. So this is really good for stuff like mackerel and those sort of species. And, um, yeah, once that blood's pumped out, it improves the colour and the eating quality of the fish. So it's a definite uh, definite thing you should really do. I noticed it actually in... Uh, um, Spangled Emperor up on a recent trip up there. I forgot to bleed a couple of those fish, and um, yeah, the, there was a marked difference between um, a bled Spangled Emperor and an unbled Spangled Emperor. So I thoroughly recommend doing that as well. Yeah, cool. All right, um, gutting fish. Uh, after you've bled a fish, you gut the fish. What, why do we? Why do we gut a fish? Yeah, mate. This is uh, once again. I mean. I like to gut the fish in the water because basically it provides me with a little bit of burly. Uh, it seems to be pretty good stuff, particularly on like eat, uh, weed eating fish. It can be quite smelly, and um, and a lot of guys recommend that you gut you know all your weed eating fish like parrotfish and that kind of thing straight away. Um, yeah, just so that it doesn't foul the flesh. Yeah, yeah. Daniel Mann says uh, he was a former guest on the podcast. He he said like on extended trips they don't gut fish because that uh, if you don't it. It seems to preserve the eating quality of the flesh over a prolonged period of time in the cooler, so or the esky or the chili bin, depending on where in the world you are. Which, um, okay, so your you gut fish, uh, a lot of the time, Turbo, when do you not gut fish apart from when you're on longer fish? You, you worry about sharks with gutting them in the water? Oh, I don't really know, but I'm sure if there are a lot of sharks around, you probably don't want to be bleeding and gutting in the water. Um, it's probably something you want to avoid, but um, yeah, we haven't had too many problems with that kind of stuff. When you were shore diving out Bundy and that, and you're a couple of hundred meters offshore, uh, did you still gut fish up there as well? Yeah, I did. Yep. <laughs> okay. I, I'm not sure it's something I'd recommend, but I have done it. Yeah, definitely. Right. Okay. Cool. Okay. So storing the fish on the boat, or or if we're at, we'll get to shore diving and and maybe out in kayaks in a sec. But if you're out on a boat spear fishing. Uh, how do we store the fish on the boat? So usually um, you want to have a good quality um, ice box. We call them eskies here. You guys call them chili bins over in New Zealand. So there's, there's you know three main types. You get your basic um, sort of plastic um, one with foam in it, then a heavier duty um, sort of plastic um, rotor molded one, I guess they are, um, plastic box, and then the, the top, top of the line are the uh, fiberglass boxes. So what you want to do with these is get an ice slurry going. So um, an ice slurry basically is a mixture of ice and salt water, and the salt brings the temperature down um, and creates a, a really cold environment in the ice box. So for that, you, you really want to use two parts of ice to one part seawater as a minimum and, uh, and get those fish right in there. And it's really good because the ice slurry gets a 
higher level of um, cold water contact to the fish. So basically, it can really pull that heat out of the fish super quick. Yeah, nice, right? Eh? Okay, cool. And so the cheaper ones, the cheaper coolers, they are an esky, and then the better quality ones are a cooler, and then the top of the line ones are a chili bin. Was that right? Um, isn't chili bin just a generic term for your like, eskies over there in New Zealand? Yeah, yeah. I was just making a joke, but it's all right. You <coughs> straight oh, over your head. It. Yeah, Sorry, no, mate. I'm, I'm battling a bit of a hangover, so <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> no worries, buddy. G'day, guys. If you're new to spear fishing, I highly recommend listening to our episode Free Diving for Spear Fishing with Pete Ryder. Pete uh, is an entrepreneur and an excellent free dive instructor, and he has come up with two great courses the 10 meter free dive and the 5 minute free diver. I've used the 5 minute free diver to increase my bottom time, found it incredibly useful for my trip to the Coral Sea, and I cannot recommend it highly enough. His other course, the 10 meter free diver, is a great resource for those just starting out that literally want to get to 10 meters, and this course will help you learn proper breathing technique and some of the safety aspects associated with freediving. Use the code NoobSpiro to save 20% on all of Pete's courses. He's put together this deal just for listeners of the show. That's at howtofreedive.com. Use the code NoobSpiro. Okay, so we've stored the fish. Uh, oh, okay. With kayaks and out shore diving, how do you store fish? I mean, I've seen the boat floats. Is that something you ever used? I've no idea. You sprung this one on me. It's not in my notes. Why don't you tell us all about that? So boat floats are like, a, like it's almost like an esky that floats yep. with a big lid mm-hmm. on it and you can have your dive flag on it and it, it sort of doubles as a dive float and your sort of, um, and your esky out there as well. Um, yep. I have I have not actually used one myself. When I shore dive, generally it's two or three hours. And I, I guess one of the good things about doing it, I've seen a really good one from weddy.co.nz. They've got one, uh, it just seems to be pretty streamlined in the water and not be too bothered by wind and swell and stuff. Um, but yeah, like when you're out there, sometimes you want something to rest on, particularly shore diving. And it's a great, you know, you've always got to have a dive and flag, float flag anyway, especially shore diving. Uh, so yeah, something that's otherwise you're tying your fish off to the float, which is not real ideal sometimes with sharks in the water because they'll, they'll grab that, they'll cut your float, float line and all, all they'll just rip it and say goodbye to all your gear so how long can you leave just um dead fish on your float for brown i have no idea mate you know what i told you what we had before this (laughs) 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 okay so look we've been shore diving or um or or we've got back in the boat we've got the fish in the cooler or the esky or the chili bin whatever way you want to go and what's our next step all right i thought we might look at filleting now filleting something that takes practice and time and there are some great tutorials um on youtube and we're going to link those up for you guys as well and one of the things though that is often overlooked are knives so you need a good quality knife and you need a couple of knives to, to do sort of different things so um we use um f dick swibo um and victrinox knives i mean they're a fairly good mid-range knife um stainless steel good solid plastic handles but on top of that you're going to need a stone um, and a steel or some sort of the pull-through sharpening devices can be good as well. So you've just got to keep your knives nice and sharp. Now, when I say you need a couple of knives, there's knives that are good for um, smaller, flexier knives are good for working like little um, species like brim and stuff like that. <clears throat> Whereas if you're going to go and shoot big mackerel and stuff like that, you're probably going to need a longer bladed knife. And I even use a, a straight knife uh, that's quite wide for skinning mackerel, and I find that quite easy to use as well. And I keep it a little blunter them other knives so um <clears throat> we'll link up some youtube videos for you guys to uh learn how to uh fill it properly but i think it's sort of beyond the realms of podcasting to tell you how to do that yeah okay like one thing we do well sometimes as a crew is we we divide our jobs up too so how, can you describe that process for some of the listeners like how we do it in the post crew like if we've got a we've got a good esky full of uh fish yeah, exactly. All right. So if you've got a crew together, um, basically you want to divide the the whole job up into a few smaller tasks. So basically we'll have somebody on the filleting table filleting out fish and we'll have somebody working the cryovac machine and another guy labelling bags. And that just keeps things nice and quick and easy and nobody really wants to be sitting at the filleting table for hours at the end of the day. So it's best to um, just divide it up into tasks and, uh, and get stuck into it. Um, 
new guys, they generally get to fill at the cod just because they're a pain in the bum to do. <laughs> so we, we, we let them do that part and uh, while well, everyone has a beer. But, yeah, the rest of it is, uh, yeah, and I, re- and I thoroughly recommend getting a cryovac machine. Um, I think it's just a really nice way to, um, to package and process your fish, make it nice and easy and, and keep the portion sizes realistic for what you're going to eat. Yeah, nice. All right, yeah, and uh, like, can you share a little bit about how you caught Ciguatera and how how we overcome, you know, so, you know, one of the potential issues there with 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 why we label fish? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, one of the mistakes I made uh, coming back from a reef trip um, off Lucinda, north of Townsville, was oh, I didn't label uh, the fish, the the actual species that are in the bags, and I kept those. Uh, Species the same, so the the same fillets all went in the same bags, which is a bit of a no no in those sort of areas. So you want to break those um, the the fillets up, so that you know exactly what. So basically, you want to label them so you know what you're eating, and you want to eat varying fillets so that if there is a fish there, Ciguatera, in it, you're not getting a high high dose of it by eating um, bulk fillets of it. You might just get one fillet in a meal. And that way you can sort of know. But the most important thing is to label those um, those packages just so you know that if something does go wrong, you can get rid of it. Yeah. Uh, it brings us neatly to another point, which is uh, the shelf life on frozen fillets. What what are you what are you getting there on frozen fish? How, how do you go about well, freezing fish? All right. Well, I'll, mo- I'll just move on to storage in general. And um, this comes from the Sydney Fish Market website. So um, so for refrigeration, um, they're saying the best thing to do is put in a littered container and, and cover with a damp cloth, uh, store it in the coldest part of the fridge and eat within two to three days of um, storage. So yeah, you don't, you don't have a lot of time with fish. Um, moving on to freezing, you want to place it in an airtight freezer bag or a cryovac bag, uh, extract as much air as possible. Um, you can you can either use those Ziploc freezer bags and sort of push the air out, uh, a cryovac bag, or even the poor man's cryovac, and we'll link up a video for that, which is uh, just Ziploc freezer bags uh, in a bucket of water that's used to uh, push the air out. So um, we'll link that one up. I thought that was a great little uh, idea. So you got to extract as much air as possible, uh, label and date. Now, whole non-oily fish can be frozen for up to six months at negative 18 degrees Celsius or less. However, whole oily fish and all and all fish fillets can be frozen for up to three months or less. And to thaw those out, uh, the best way to do that is in the fridge uh, overnight. Or if you need that, if you need uh, fish fillets quickly, um, put them in a bag like a waterproof bag and put them in cold water, not warm water, in the sink, and do it that way. Uh, apart from that, uh, the microwave on defrost mode. Yeah, nice. Yeah. I was just thinking back, you were talking about cool things we've seen on Facebook in the poor man's cryovac, which is essentially using a bucket of water to drive the air out of a, 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 a bag, like a freezer bag. Um, yeah. Another cool thing that's come up on Facebook lately is the freefishheads.co.nz website where they these guys have started this service where they connect people in communities because... Uh, a lot of ethnic groups will will eat the the fish heads and all of the fish. They'll break it down and use it as stock for soup or whatever. Uh, so if you go and check out freefishheads.co.nz, you can um, donate your you know all of the stuff that we don't use when we fillet fish, like the head, uh, the tail, the the spine, all the rest of it. You can someone will come around and collect it for you basically, and and they'll they'll use it. So it's a great sort of initiative I've seen from those boys over there. Yeah, no, awesome. Yeah, the less waste the better. Yeah, yeah. Hi guys, Shrek and myself have penned a book called 99 Tips to Get Better at Spearfishing. It's available on Amazon. It's full of all the great tips and advice that we've uh, heard over the course of the show. If you'd like to check that out, once again, it's 99 Tips to Get Better at Spearfishing, available on Amazon.com. So you've talked about thawing frozen fish, and that pretty much wraps up uh, caring for your catch, but... um you, you you cooked a cracker of a recipe uh, late last year with some kingfish. Uh, what, what was that one? It's on newspira.com. Yeah, mate, uh, a little bit of Moroccan kingfish. Thought I'd get a bit creative. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's up on our on our blog roll. So get in and have a look at that, mate. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, the kingfish went really good in that, actually. Really yeah, nice. yeah. Uh, kingfish also go really well with um, diced up into, like, nugget-sized things and panko crumbed. Oh, oh you love, love that. nuggets. Oh, oh. I do. Mm. And 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 proper proper tartare sauce with that. Oh, that's 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 
That's the shit right there. All right, uh, settle down. <laughs> <laughs> Another good um, channel that I've recently come across is Kimmy Werner. She's got a YouTube channel that's got a phenomenal following, but she's a, a proper culinary chef as well. And what she does with fish and octopus is just friggin' amazing. I, I want to try out a ceviche that I saw of hers the other day. It was just phenomenal. So I'll try and link that up in the show notes for you guys. Brilliant. Apart, All right. from, apart from that, make sure you get on and check out 99 Tips to Get Better at Spearfishing on Amazon. And yep. uh, and those remember the iTunes and Stitcher reviews. If you go and leave a review of the show on there, that would be phenomenal. Send it into one of us, Turbo at Noob Sparrow or Shrek at Noob Sparrow. We'll send you off a, D, a DVD. They're not going to last long, so get into it. And uh, we've also got an Audible book coming out, Shrek, very shortly. Yeah, we... We went into the studio and we recorded 99 tips to get better at spearfishing so, in an audio format. And there's going to be some bonus stuff on that, I've got a good feeling. So, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll let you guys know when that's nearly to, uh, ready to be released as well. So, thanks for tuning in today. Thanks, guys. We'll talk to you soon. This show is proudly brought to you in partnership with Adreno. Shop with our sponsors at spearfishing.com.au and use the code NoobSpearer at checkout to save $20 on purchases over $200, while you can also enjoy $15 flat shipping Australia-wide. Adreno is the biggest dive store in the world, stocking a huge range of Spearow's favourite gear with mega stores in Brisbane, Sydney and now Melbourne, and 60 talented underwater experts on staff. It's a no-brainer to head in before your next big spearfishing trip. Check them out at spearfishing.com.au. Thanks for listening to today's show. Make sure to leave us a review on iTunes or Stitcher. To learn more about becoming a better Spiro, visit us at noobspiro.com and subscribe to our newsletter.